Imagine this, it's 8.23 and your class starts at 8.30. You've missed the bus and there's no possible way you're going to walk because it's negative 23 degrees outside and you're not suitable for that weather. You think to yourself, how could you possibly miss a class of such rich and fulfilling information? But then you have a thought of realization and you think, I've got a pet dragon in the garage. So you go outside, you hop on old Smoggy, and you fly to class, burning all the civilians on the way. But wait, how could that possibly work? How could a dragon actually fly and burn people to a crisp? Like bumble, like you know, bumblebees and butterflies can fly, but dragons are 2,000 pounds. Like how can you actually get that much force off the ground? As well as breathing fire, like people in circuses can breathe fire, but how could a dragon do it? These are really important questions, so to figure this out, we'll send this over to uh, David to break it down using real physics. Thank you very much, Matt. So let's start talking about how a dragon would actually fly. Now, it's a very simple problem. Um, a dragon experiences a force of gravity, and all it needs to do is generate enough force to actually lift it off the ground. Here, we're using that a dragon weighs about 2,000 kilograms. Okay, so the question then becomes, how big would a dragon's wings need to be in order to generate enough force to lift it off the ground? So to answer this question, we look at the closest species in nature to a dragon, which is a bat. Now, when looking at a bat, we look at two things. The first is what's called wing loading, which is uh, the area of a bat's wings in comparison to its mass. We also look at the aspect ratio, which is how wide the wings are in comparison to the area of the wings. Now, if we use these things and we plot the known species of bat bats, we see this very nice line of best fit and if we extrapolate this to a, a very high mass we can get what the wingspan of this very high mass bat would be. Now I've ran the numbers, I've done the algebra, and uh, at the end we get that a dragon would need a wingspan of about 27.8 meters in order to fly. All right, that's it, that's simple. <sighs> Wait a minute. Okay, so um, we've done a little bit more math. And uh, we've run into a problem here. So basically, in order for a dragon to have a wingspan of 27.8 meters, um, it would need it would need a lot of muscles to actually move those wings fast enough. Uh, of course, um, the more muscles it has, the heavier a dragon gets. And of course, the heavier a dragon gets, the uh, the larger its wingspan needs to be. Which of course it means it needs more muscles. Which means it means needs more wingspan. And, um, well, I mean, as far as the math goes, it all checks out. I, I don't think that there's any way a dragon can fly. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Dave? Uh, Dave? Yeah? Uh, you, you forgot the minus sign on the, uh, on the two. Sorry? You, uh... Sorry, sorry, everybody. Uh, you forgot the minus sign uh, on the two. Uh, I, meant, I meant to say something earlier, but, you know, you were really going at it, so... It does, yeah. Son of a Well, that was a bit of a gong show. I think we're going to leave David to battle out his own head. We're going to go over to Mike now and talk a lot more about Dragonfire because he does know a ton about it. Thanks, Matt. So one of the main things people associate with dragons is their ability to breathe fire. Is this actually possible? Could an animal actually breathe fire without having any magical powers? Well, first we need to consider the components required to make a fire. We need oxygen fuel, and heat. Oxygen is easy to find since it can be found almost anywhere on Earth. It's in the air we breathe. Fuel is a bit trickier, but actually, many organic life forms produce their own fuel in the form of methane and hydrogen gas exist in the digestive system of most animals. This could easily be used as a fuel source. The difficulty would be in controlling this fuel. If an animal could control the methane or hydrogen and somehow push it from its stomach to its mouth, we have a flammable fuel source. So oxygen, check, fuel, check, and now just for the heat. This animal needs some sort of spark in order to create heat for the fire. Now a fire starter doesn't occur naturally in many species. If it did, that would be kind of concerning, but it can be obtained from the environment. This comes in the form of piezoelectric crystals. Piezoelectric crystals can be found in rocks like quartz or topaz. These crystals, when squeezed together, can create a spark which could theoretically light a fire. If an animal did manage to eat and store these crystals in its mouth or back of its throat, it could be the spark needed for the fire. Therefore, if a dragon were able to eat these rocks and harness its own natural fuel, 
seems very unlikely that this would occur naturally through evolution, but it is possible for an animal to possess the ability to breathe fire. Back to you, Matt. Wow, Mike. You really uh, blew some fire on that explanation. Anyways, we can go back to Dave now because I'm pretty sure he's figured out the dragon flight. So, back to you. I figured it out. I haven't slept for three days, but I figured it out, alright? A dragon doesn't need enough power to lift itself off the ground. Just think of a plane, right? A plane doesn't flap its wings to get off the ground. No, it just moves really fast. So, theoretically, if a, if a dragon could move fast enough, it could get off the ground. Here's another thing. What if the dragon was on top of a cliff, right? It's on top of a cliff, it jumps down, it gets to enough speed, and then all it needs with a 27.8 wingspan, that's enough to keep it in the air, and it can fly. It can fly, all right? It just needs to get to great enough speeds by moving fast or jumping off a cliff, and it can fly. This is similar to what an albatross does, but the bottom line is it can fly. Uh, 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 Dave? I, I, I'd hate to do this, man. I'd hate to do this, but uh, you still miss the minus sign on the two. Again, you you were into it. No one wanted to say anything, but... Uh, Mother! Wow, remarkable. Can't believe dragons can fly and breathe fire, too. Screw you, Evolution, for not giving the world dragons. Anyways, I would like to thank Mike and Dave for their excellent explanations. I think next week I will try and find the unified field theory for gravity, electromagnetism, and the weak and strong forces. Till then, see you later, alligators. <laughs> <laughs>